Tim. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a gob, it's time for the only news that matters. And to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the release of Coverdale Page's uh, title album, self-titled album, the LP, has been reissued in Japan in analog format for the first time anywhere in the world. At the time of Coverdale Page's original release, analog vinyl was produced in small quantities. And... The 61-minute album was contained on a single LP. The first Japanese analog release, which arrives on November 22nd, has been made available on four sides of two LPs with a transparent blue vinyl for the best sound quality. The well-received Coverdale page set was recorded in several studios on both sides of the Atlantic over the winter of 91 and 92 before it was finally released on March of 1993. Uh, David Coverdale discussed possibilities of a reissue of his collaboration with Jimmy Page in a 2021 interview. He said, I was very excited. Jimmy and I worked very well creatively. As you can hear, and we had another four or five songs which were unmixed and i said jimmy i got all these other ideas let's just do coverdale page two and uh or let's make a double album and sadly his manager at the time talked him out of it which was infuriating however some of those songs that i had to present to tim uh jimmy are on uh, David Coverdale and Whitesnake's 97 album, Restless Heart. It was uh, Take Me Back Again and Women Trouble Blues. They were original ideas for Jimmy and I, and, uh, you know, had we made a second album. But, you know, uh, th this album, this David Coverdale album with Paige, it went platinum. You know, and I think uh, it, it was high on the charts. Uh, I think it was number five in the States and even higher in the UK. I think it, it initially did well. And I got to say, and this ain't a popular opinion. I get it. But, you know, my favorite Deep Purple is Mach 2 with Gillen and Glover. But my all-time favorite uh, Deep Purple song is Burn. And that, to me, is the greatest thing that David Coverdale ever did. Now, the second greatest thing he ever did, I know it's unpopular, is the Coverdale Page album. I like it more than any White Snake album. I like it more than Stormbringer, you know, or Come Taste the Band. This is David Coverdale at his best. You know, Jimmy Page, of course, can't top Led Zeppelin. But this is definitely the best thing he's done since Led Zeppelin. I did enjoy walking the Clarksdale, you know, the page and plant thing, but I still like Coverdale Page more. And, you know, uh, Robert Plant at the time was, you know, uh, having a hissy fit because he talked bad about David Coverdale. And, yeah, there was a little backlash on this album being too Jimmy, I mean, uh, Led Zeppelin-esque. You know, I remember back in the day, Kingdom Come was Led Zeppelin-esque, and that kind of killed them after a while. And this one didn't help. Yet, Greta Van Fleet, nobody bats an eye. But whatever. This ain't about that crappy band. I'm talking about Coverdale Page. Absolutely love this album. It sucks it's being released in Japan on blue vinyl, two blue vinyl. I mean, I am seriously considering looking for it and see how much it is. If it's too much, then... Whatever, I'll keep the CD. I'm happy with the Coverdale page CD. I absolutely love this album. And I'm not a fan of long-ass albums. And this is a long-ass album. But this is one of those exceptions. I love this long-ass album. There's no song on this album I dislike. 
There's a lot of great songs on here. Uh, you know, um, Shake My Tree. My favorite on here is Absolution Blues. That song smokes, and I love Pride and Joy. And what else is on there? Feeling Hot. Uh, ooh, don't Leave Me This Way. Whisper a Prayer for the Dying. I don't have the CD in front of me, but I'm just going by my memory. Take, uh, take Me For A Little While. Over Now. Every song on this album, I absolutely love. And they should release it here, man, because I know to buy an album in Japan, it's going to be pricey, man. And, uh, God, it, it went platinum. You know, I mean, God, why can't they, you know, there was initially going to be a box set. I, I, I remember they were talking about re-releasing uh, Coverdale Page as a box set. And then I heard, like, maybe like a year or two ago, Coverdale saying that that idea was scrapped. Which sucks, because a box set would have probably had live stuff and, and, you know, and probably outtakes or whatever. And I have a, a live show from Japan. Coverdale page, which is actually like a soundboard. It ain't from the audience, and it's an amazing show, man. Page was on fire during this time. And Coverdale, man, I mean, look, I like White Snake, and I gotta say, you know, not the self title album, but when I saw Slip of the Tongue, that tour, my God, that was one of the greatest vocal performances I've ever seen in my life by anybody. Coverdale was magic that night. And you know, on this album, he's magic as well. He had amazing pipes. Yes, I know, age has deteriorated him, which is a shame. And a lot of people always focus on, oh, but he sings like crap now. And they don't really talk about, you know, like, you know, David Lee Roth and, you know, Paul Stanley and everybody focuses too much on how crappy their voices are now. But man, were they gods back in the day? All of them sounded so amazing. Great voices. And David Coverdale's voice here is amazing. I think him and Jimmy Page was a better, much better, much better uh, collaboration than what Page did with Plant later. And I like that stuff, especially walking to Clarksdale. I have no problem with it. But with Coverdale, it was a bit more heavy and on point, and Jimmy is shredding on it. You know, it's just, I thought it was an amazing collaboration where, Jesus, you know, I mean, yeah, Paige left to uh, join Plant, you know, and Plant bitching about Coverdale and all this shit, and that brought an end to this. But I think this album, it gained a lot of uh, steam when it came out. And then I don't know if it's the backlash or Geffen Records. It just kind of like dropped the ball on a platinum selling album. It just, it was baffling to me at the time how that album came out, was successful. But yet in a way it was a failure because it just, you know, imploded after that. And there was no more Coverdale Page, which is a shame because this, I got to say, man, I'm... I think it came out in, uh, I don't know, like 93 or something. And man, I got to overlook albums that came out in 93 because um, I'm thinking this may have been the best album in 1993 for me. I got to overlook. I'm not sure, but I got to say, this is one of the greatest 90s albums, hands down. And damn, man, I want to get this on vinyl, on two vinyls, as you see back then. It was all stuck on one vinyl, so I'm sure that original pressing sounds like crap. But I gotta say, the CD sounds fine. You know, I love vinyl, it's my favorite format. But man, I love CDs too. And there's really nothing wrong with the sound of Coverdale and Page on CD. And it's long, and long albums sound fine on compact disc. I mean, in my experience, I think this CD kicks ass, but yeah. I would definitely like it on two vinyls. I don't care about the color. I'll take it black, which is my favorite color of vinyl, black. But hey, if it comes out in blue and that's the only one I can get, I'm happy with colored vinyl too, don't get me wrong. But if I had a choice, 
it would be black. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching the only news that matters. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Ring that little notification bell. Leave my leave comments about what you think of uh, Coverdale Page and uh, like the video because it's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>